and things you can do to help secure your bike to reduce bike theft so when going in a filling station as we're doing now try and choose a pay at the pump pump so therefore you're not leaving your bike unattended to go off and pay for your petrol card. So let's talk about bike theft in the UK. It's fucking horrendous. Fucking horrendous. 26,000 bikes every year get nicked. 26,000 of people's prides and joy that they saved all their hard-earned cash for to have a bit of fun on. And 26,000 of the fuckers get nicked every year. And unfortunately, very few get returned to their owners. So what can you do? What can you do to help keep your bike? Well, we just filled up with petrol and I used the pay at the pump point, which I think is ideal for bikes, especially if you're on your own. If, you, if you've got two or three of you in the group or something, it's, it's not a problem is it? Because uh, you could all watch one another's bikes. But if you're on your own and if you're in a strange town say, always try and find a pay at the pump point. Pay at the point, oh, I don't know, pay at the pump. Put your card in, pay for it there and then. So you ain't got to leave your bike to go into the kiosk. Because uh, a lot of them are opportunists. They'll, they'll see it sitting there and they go and fucking grab it. So that's the way to go on that. That's the first thing you can do to keep your bike yours and stop thieving bastards nicking it. What else can you do? When you get to your destination, again, if you're in a strange town, always try and find a place to park where um, it's a tight one. Where um, it is for bikes, and also try and find somewhere. Just look in the look in the air, and you'll see CCTV cameras everywhere. Try and find somewhere where there's a camera covering you. But that's not the be all and end all, is it? So many people. Now I know this in my town because I pop down the town often on a Saturday and um, where I park my car oh, there's a bit of a few spaces for bikes and I very often look at them very few have got a chain or a disc lock and quite a few haven't even got the steering lock on and they don't even turn their wheel to make it look like they've got a steering lock on. So I can just park it straight in, straight, you know. Well, that's an open invitation for a thief, I would think, parking like that. So, what you need is good quality chains, good quality disc locks, and don't have just have one. Don't just have one. Do as much as you can to slow the thieving bastards down. If they come armed, these gangs of bike thieves come armed with rechargeable angle grinders. Now an angle grinder will cut through any fucking chain, don't care how much you pay for it, in a few seconds. So the more you got on your bike, the harder it is for them to nick it. And they don't want to be there too long. So, put as much on your bike as you can, basically. Put a fucking great chain 
a range back wheel and try and chain it to something solid if there's something solid to chain it to. Most bike parks have got a railing of some description you can chain it to. And put a good quality disc lock on one of your front discs maybe. And another very good idea, I think, is to carry one of these flimsy bike covers. You know, I'm not talking about the big Oxford ones that are weigh a ton, but you can get the very thin nylon ones, which are rubbish quality. But if you cover your bike up, especially if you're leaving it all bloody day, like you know, a lot of people do, they go to work, they go to work on their bike and they've got um, nowhere to park on the premises where they work, so they park it in the bike park. If it's covered up, one, the thief can't see exactly what it is, because it's a bike, they can't see whether it's an R1 or a fucking CBR125, so with a little flimsy cover on, you're at least disguising it a little bit, and it's also hassle to remove the cover. I know they could just cut it off with a knife, but it's more hassle, and the more hassle you make for them, the less likely they are to pick on your bike, especially if there's one sat next to yours with no chains on, no covers on, they're going to nick that one. Simple. They want an easy life, these thieving bastards. And a lot of them are in thieving gangs. You know, it's organised fucking crime, a lot of it. So, if they want a bike, they'll take it, don't worry about that. If they want it, they'll have it, don't matter what you do to it. But if you can make it as awkward for them as possible, then um, that's what you should do. Alarms, they don't care about fucking alarms. They just don't care about them. They can be bleeping and bleeping all the time there, because all they're doing is they're stealing the bike. Um, they don't give a fuck. If an alarm's going off, they just ride off with it. Well, I ride off with it, I mean, most of them have a scooter pushing them along with their foot. They don't even bother trying to jump the ignition, uh, yeah, jump to start the ignition or anything like that, or hot wire it or whatever, like car thieves do. They just wheel them off. And of course, the organised gangs have got a fucking van sitting somewhere quite close so they stick it straight in the back of a the van there it is gone never seen again and I'm sure a lot of them get stolen they get exported straight away onto a container gone out of the country whoosh with the old bike thieves they don't give a shit about alarms they don't give a shit about anyone's property they just want to nick it they get paid per unit and that's what they call it, they don't call it a bike, they don't call it a, an R1M, it's a unit to them, and that's worth about 500 quid probably, for every unit they steal. And as I say, a lot of those type of bikes will end up being sent abroad, and never seen again. Of course, another lot of them will be just broken for spares end up in a breaker's yard somewhere, or an illegal breaker's yard, she would say. And um, they'll never be seen again either, because they're all in bits. So that's that. That's the thieving bastard side of it. Now a lot of people are saying, fucking police ain't interested. Yeah, they're fucking bastards, they, they won't chase them, they won't do nothing. Well, of course they won't. They have to abide by health and safety laws, which are rife in this country, which makes easy pickings for thieves, doesn't it? They know the laws probably better than you or I do. They know if they nick a bike and go riding off on it without an helmet, fucking police ain't going to chase them. In fact, the police aren't going to chase them full stop because they've got to bear in mind that um, there's other road users around 
Uh, if you're getting nicked in town, obviously they can't chase people through the town because there's pedestrians. So they've got to think of all that. And, uh, you know, they they would like to, I'm sure they would. They don't like thieving bastards any more than you or I do. But I'm afraid their hands are tied. The law says they cannot chase them. So, they're not going to. But, as I said, they would like to catch the thieving bastards just as much as you or I would. And probably would like to do as much damage to them as you or I would like to do. But they can't. So, you can't blame the police. One, they haven't got the resources to um, chase people and try and follow up on it all the time. There's so many fucking bikes being stolen, you'd need double the amount of officers, I should think, in the police force to follow up all the thefts. You know, right to the very end and, and find exactly where it's gone. It's just, it's just not viable. So all you can do, as I said before, is make your bike as awkward to steal as you possibly can and um, try and hang on to it for as long as you can. So there we are. That's bike theft in the UK. It's a bastard. Especially if you've um, forked out a fortune for a nice big bike and you know, you've spent, I don't know, 14, 15 grand on a bike. Even worse if you've bought it on HP. If you have bought it on HP, on one of these 200 pound down deals and, and paying the rest off, you know, never, <laughs> over how many years, make sure you get yourself some fucking gap insurance. Because if your bike does get stolen, um, the insurance will say, yeah, that 15 grand bike you've got, it's only worth 10. So then you're left with five grand to find, to pay it off. You're left out of pocket. So get yourself some gap insurance, which will fill that gap. And at least then, you're not paying for something you ain't got anymore. Still doesn't help, because you ain't got it. And you've got to start all over again. So, it's better than being five grand out of pocket. And having, you know, some bastard stolen your bike. And uh, you're left with a five grand bill to pay to the um, finance company. Because the insurance company's only coughed up three quarters of it or whatever you know so if you're buying new make sure you got that covered um, that's about it that's all I can think of to keep your, keep your bike secure really you know I mean you could do lots of things but if some bastard wants your bike they're gonna fucking have it it's not like a car is it it's not a big lump of metal it's quite an easy thing to wheel away once they've unlocked it and whatever so um, look after it, do as much as you can to keep your bike, your bike, no one else's. You're never going to stop thieving little scrotes because the fucking world's full of them, especially in the UK. So there we go, that's my little tips on how to keep your bike, your bike. There's probably loads more you can do, probably loads I've missed out, but um, that's it for now. So keep it yours, keep it safe, and ride the thing safe. Don't ride it like you've nicked it. See you later, tubes. Bye now.